Okay. Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. Are you Richard Nixon? Huh? You Richard Nixon now? No. Why? Hey, you throwing out a little piece of this. Oh, it's because I have this on. I don't know. Take my power gauntlet. I don't know how. Take my infinity gauntlet. Or uh, why you have off. this. Because this I got it through Loot Crate. Oh. Because I subscribed. I do too. But yeah, and this now you is can amazing. get cool stuff. I'm just I'm just helping your your loot crate videos out because I didn't see where you unbox this, but this is amazing. Well, that that's an old one, so. Well, that's it's, amazing. Actually, this is the one that inspired me to want to do these. So. <laughs> well, little tidbit about Sean's loot crate life. Yeah. There you go. That's a freebie. And now I have you going around LARPing as Adam Warlock. Yep. The most <laughs> unknown character in all of Marvel. Yeah. So. Yeah, he's showing up in Guardians too, and I found something out that's amazing. What's that? Guess who's playing Ego, the Living Planet, in Guardians too? Kurt fucking Russell. Badass. Like he's got, he's got the chin. <laughs> he's got that chin. Marvel made some deal with Fox where they can use Ego. Cool. Okay. Well, guys, we are back here for Agents Aftershock. It's been a while. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really big on this episode. This was we. It felt like a half an episode because this we, this was very much a filler episode, and it felt like a filler episode. It was a lot of people standing around going, "Should we do something?" And then the other half going, "We should do something." Yeah. Uh, we so, did get one question answered. I finally found out where Gemma was. That's, yeah, I had a feeling that was kind of what was going on. Um, with the rest of it, it this was a setup episode. Um, yeah, it just felt like a lot of the setup was handled very clunkily and not well. <laughs> well, we got like a, a kind of a half an episode because we're seeing everything happen. And then we're going back and watching the same scene with Coulson, Fitz, and yeah, that, Robbie. Yeah, that really is what added to it a lot, I think. Rather than, like, do a split view kind of deal, you go over a scene once, and then you see basically the scene in its entirety played a second time, just from another character's perspective, but you don't really get a whole lot added to that perspective. The only really added part was when... Ghost Rider took over Mac. That was interesting. Um, I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed that. <laughs> I'm uh, not gonna lie. It was, it was fun to see another person as the writer. But this brings up the problem of the fact that it's supposed to be the spirit of vengeance that's in control while the Ghost Rider is out. Yeah. Not an amalgam of their minds and wills. So, I'm not... I also really don't like the idea of Mac just being completely and totally gung-ho with it. Like, it completely took over him. Yeah. So, it feels very much like they just kind of shoved him to the side and said, Be this for a bit. Well, it's... It also... I think it was more to kind of show something that about Robbie that we kind of seen before. But it just really kind of shoved it in your face. Robbie is very selfless. Like, he yeah. got taken over by the spirit of vengeance for his brother. Which, again, and then, is good. I like a selfless hero, but let's have a little more character interaction to show that he's a selfless character. Not just, I will do everything in my power to save you no matter what! <laughs> Well, you know, you it comes got, across as cartoonish rather than a person. Well, you got him making, like, the deal with the writer. It's like, okay, if you let me finish this, I'll do whatever you want. Which apparently is just like, mm, okay. And uh, you were proven wrong this episode. Oh. They had no clue Ada was an android. I know, that was my biggest, <laughs> biggest what the fuck moment. They, they had no I mean, I was literally clue. sitting here watching and going, WG fuck, man! You spend all this time promoting these guys to be smart, competent people, and now it's just, oh, yep, yeah, we're not sure anymore. We don't know. And this is also, it's set up, like, the very end, that's going to bite them in the ass. Yeah. Because, I mean, we see her 
like messing with the little light stuff to make the portal so the three of them could come back to yeah, the Yeah, I right. thought that was actually kind of interesting how it was yeah. only able to be seen from like the ethereal side. Yeah. Well, at the end we see her making basically a fucking brain for herself. Which, I'm not real sure why she would be doing that as an artificial con uh, artificial intelligence construct. She already kind of has a brain, so creating a humanoid brain would seem like a step down. Well, I think she was creating free will for herself, or something like that. See, that's kind of, of the problem with free will, is you're not free to make free will unless you have free will. So, oh, no. either she has free will and she just doesn't know it... Or they're pulling this out of their butt. It, it seems like one of those things. We got a couple of different setups. Um, there was that. And then there was where Simmons was with I figured out who the fucking person is. Right? Okay, who is this then? Okay, so I don't know what character it is. But remember when Mace and that woman were in the car. Yeah. He was like, what do you want? Right. And we see her brother was the terraform. Right. That's her brother. Well, yeah, we knew that. Well, like... I, they, I immediately knew that was what was going on well, when we stepped into it. You didn't tell me anything! I don't know Damn why... Damn it, man, you're just like this episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You haven't actually told me anything. Well, apparently he's... Like, his powers are not strength. It just... Because Juma started breaking off. Would you reach over and just push that close so we don't have this happening anymore? Apparently, his power has something to do with not needing to eat for seven months, though, because he's just kind of been in this thing. My for... God, it's a crossover with Matter Eater Lad. <laughs> Truly, this is the only superhero it could be. I, I don't know, but like they, she like figured out and started peeling the crap off this guy, and then they were like, Phew. "But uh, well, that raises the question: Why the hell didn't they do this to begin with?" I don't know. I mean, they had the ability to detect a heartbeat. It doesn't really seem like these guys are that big into the ethics side of the deal, so... I feel this is where we kind of missed what could have been our Doctor Strange tie-in, but which we didn't get at all. No, we didn't get any kind of Doctor Strange tie-in, so Doctor Strange just kind of happens. Yeah. More thoughts on that than the Doctor Strange. Experience. I think the most disappointing thing for me, though, is they were like, oh, well, next week's the mid-season finale. Yeah, and we're just kind of left in this, like, oh, you know, there we go, it happened. Uh, I, I don't know, I always get mad at shows when they go into this, and they're like, oh, the mid-season finale, when it's not really the mid-season finale, like... This is, next episode's gonna be like episode 8, and this is like a 23 episode show. So it's like, man, it's not really the middle of your season, but you're saying this because you need to play Frosty the Snowman, and here comes Santa Claus 30 hey. freaking hey. times. Dude, I've seen Frosty the Frosty Snowman. Frosty the Santa Claus fought for your sins. Dude, I've seen Frosty the Snowman like six times already this year. Uh, just a heads up, can we get a Frosty the Santa Claus movie? It's where uh, Frosty the Snowman and Santa Claus use the uh, teleporter from the fly. And Santa's trying to learn, trying to teleport into people's houses to make it uh, that much faster to deliver presents. And Frosty accidentally falls in and they get combined. That's, that's an amazing idea. <laughs> Let's do it. Sounds amazing to me. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, Hollywood's gonna like watch our videos and steal these ideas from us. Damn you, Hollywood! Or they'll they'll mess with the fusion earrings from Dragon Ball. Yeah. Or, no, they have to be the same height. No, that's the fusion dance. The uh, yeah, I'm thinking of the fusion dance. Sorry. <laughs> I would much rather see that happen. Fusion. <laughs> 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 ha! <laughs> Thank God we're not the same height, otherwise that wouldn't work. Well, you have to, like, even out your power level. There's a list of things to go with the fusion dance. I'm a big Dragon Ball nerd. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? Dude, Ford completely stole that for their new fusion commercial. Like, when Gohan and uh, Gotenks, or when uh, Gotenks and Trunks fused, mm -hmm. they turned into a Ford fusion car. Nice. It was dumb. 
<laughs> that sounds really stupid and at the same time really fun and absolutely something Toriyama would approve of. I knew something like that was going to happen when about a year ago went on a Ford Fusion. I saw a Goku and Vegeta sticker under it where they were doing the Fusion dance. Nice. Apparently my uh, house specter wants in on this video. It, so. it's, it's Hello, ghost. house specter. How are you? Is Ghost Rider in here? No, the Ghost Rider. Uh, was that Coulson? No, the Spirit of Vengeance takes a physical form to walk through the world. Was, was that Coulson? Yeah, it might have been Coulson. Yeah. Hi, guys. Thank you, Greg Clark, for coming to visit. <laughs> Good to see you. Love your shows. <laughs> yeah, there's not much to talk about with this episode. It was a lot of them running around... Um, doing things and then we get to see them doing things again from a different perspective and it was really just really boring that being said this is kind of the first episode of this season where this has happened yeah so being this far into it and this being so far the only one to do that i'm kind of okay with uh, provided they don't continue the trend to do episodes like this yeah i, I think the only really character development we got was like robbie a little bit Maybe and right. Ada, and the fact that no one had a clue about Ada. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Mac a little bit. Like you kind of see him looking a little. What was bit. on the back of the photograph he was looking at? I don't. It, it was a date. It was. It was like. No, don't 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 uh, worry about it. Don't worry. About I'll it. throw it in the. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there was a date on the back of this photograph that he's sitting there looking at when Robbie appears through the portal. Which nice of them to leave that on so he could walk through it eventually. <laughs> I think it would have been way it, cooler if Ghost Rider just ripped a hole open in space and walked through. But they you know, probably whatever. didn't have the budget to do that. Yeah, it, it, it didn't seem like the portal was left on because when the portal was on, May could see Coulson. Right. Then this thing went on. He just kind of like happens to stumble it. through at the exact <laughs> spot that I don't know. I, I don't know. What like I say, you you for. were probably hitting the nail on the head just perfectly with the budget reasons. Yeah, and that's really what's worrying me is a lot of this is coming down to how much their budget has left, and I'm not seeing a lot of that left. Well, I'm I'm putting I'm thinking the budget's more they're saving to do the mid season finale. This is better be one hell of a mid season finale. Well, you're gonna get. So, I went back and I did some research on the uncle, because you thought I I did the research before, like, it well, never, you you did. well, it never really said who he is, like, in the books, he's Eli Morrow. Right. The only character that they said is even remotely close to this is Molecule Man, but it, he's obviously not Molecule Man. Isn't he an X-Men villain? He man, he was like an Avengers, like he was a, like a D grade villain, hmm. like, and this is obviously not what they're doing, right. like at all. So he's kind of just like his own original character for well, the that'd be show, cool. that'd be because cool. Robbie's origin is so different from right. the comics. So predictions. Um. Uh, I definitely think uh, we're going to get a very Ghost Rider centric episode for the mid season finale. Um, Daisy's probably back on the team. And I hate, like, Ada's going to turn around and bite him in the ass. And Yeah, she's definitely going to go all um, Age of Ultron on him. That, that being said, I do have an idea about that. But The. the 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 dude and his sister are definitely going to play a role at some point in the season. I don't know what, when, where, or why. And now that uh, Fitz knows what kind of a douchebag Mace is, uh, I think we're definitely going to see... We're going to see them start being like, yeah. okay, we know you're an asshole now. Again, I'm not... I'm not completely sold on him being a complete and total dickbag. I mean, yeah, he's done some shady stuff, but, but he's the head job. of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. I mean, name me a head of S.H.I.E.L.D. that didn't do shady shit. Coulson. Um, <laughs> but, you know, 
He he said it, he's like you know I use super powered people and I was not funded by or authorized by the government so I had to do like that's really the only like explanation we got this episode why Coulson stepped down. Yeah, we got that. It's because the president was not happy with them and they needed somebody else. Right. I'm I'm really just worried they're just going to backtrack a lot of character development with this and they're going to just put Golson back in charge again because that's what fans want rather than what's good for a character. I don't I don't think we'll say that. I hope not and I don't mean that in a bad way. I like Greg Clark. Uh I don't think he was good as a director though. I, I don't think Colson was good as a director. I like your Gemma idea that you were saying. That's really the one I'm thinking is going to have the biggest promise of it because she's really a rising star in S.H.I.E.L.D. and she knows how to do stuff and I think get stuff done. maybe like a co- like a uh, directorship between her and Fitz like because they're kind of always grouped together right? and they're like two sides of the same coin where like he is one side of reason and she's the other like this is true they, and he's been a field agent you think they could divide that between essentially a base commander and a field commander probably because that might work really good they're actually. very much two sides of the same coin but they're they're different they're completely different but right. it's like together they are like a complete awesome person yeah so like them in like a shared directorship would be pretty cool that would be neat my theory is we might be moving towards an ultron revamping the only reason i say this is because you can't really have a machine craft its own free will but if she does we might get a glimpse at a different backstory for a person called Jocasta. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, Jocasta was a machine Ultron created for essentially being his bride after he took over the world, modeled after Janet Pym, not Pym, Janet Van Dyne. Um, no, I guess it was Janet, Janet, Pym. Janet Van Dyne. Is Janet Van Dyne is what she's normally known as. Uh, she was modeled after Wasp because. Uh, Ultron was modeled after Hank Pym, and he was infatuated with uh, Janet because of that mental obsession thing. Yeah. So, okay. Well, we got to wrap this up real quick. Uh, I think that's really what's probably going to be moving towards, and we'll see you next time, everybody. Later. Laters.